Hello and welcome to another episode of I Am Max Will Hear Me Roar. And this one's going to anger a few fanboys. So you may have noticed that uh, MMOs are kind of big. Like really big. A pretty saturated market. And of course they come in several varieties. They have the incredibly unsuccessful ones, the ones that manage to scrounge out a niche, and the gigantic, the titanic, the incomparable World of Warcraft. And of course I single out World of Warcraft because it's the most successful. But why is it so successful? Is it the Warcraft universe? Is it the hot bar combat? Is it that feedback loop that consistently gives players the idea that they're progressing towards something bigger? Was it the persistent servers where all your friends could play with you? Well, I can't really answer that, but whatever they did prints money. And obviously because it prints money, people are going to copy it, which spawns countless copycat MMORPGs with hot bar mechanics. And let me take a minute to talk about copycat games. Every successful game has spawned thousands, no, tens <laughs> of copycat games that try to get by on the success of the core game. Super Mario spawned a bunch of platformers, Call of Duty spawned a bunch of modern military shooters, and of course, World of Warcraft spawned all of the MMORPGs that saturate the market today. And copycat games aren't necessarily a bad thing, but let's be honest, everyone's played one of those hot bar MMORPGs for like two hours and just never gone back because they're all terrible. But why are they terrible? I think the issue is that they bite World of Warcraft without the experience nor the money to make a game as good as WoW. Plus they bite even the bad parts about WoW, the hot bar combat, like a decade out of date. I'd argue that that hot bar combat wasn't even particularly good when it came out. But then, they get all these players that play for two hours and then quit, and they start losing money, and then they have to shut off the game or else they'll lose all their money. And then, that's it for, <laughs> for that MMORPG. It's done. And then they move on to try to make another one, which inevitably fails as well. At this point, you might be saying, but Maxwell, WoW isn't the only successful MMO, and you'd be right. But the ones that continue to exist have carved out niches for themselves. They deliver a unique experience that does not compete with World of Warcraft. Like EVE Online, big space battles with Microsoft Excel-like gameplay. World of Tanks, huge tank battles, death matches, capture the flag. It's like Battlefield with nothing but tanks. And you're gonna laugh at this one, but RuneScape, which has like six combat skills that improve your ability to fight independently of one another, and they're like a million skills to help you prepare for said fights. All of these games have one different combat. Hot bar combat is definitely should die at least. And two are different from World of Warcraft in almost every way. They don't compete and so they don't die. So what I'm saying is that if you try to compete with World of Warcraft, your game is not going to succeed. But does that mean that I think that World of Warcraft will always be so dominant? Probably not. See, since Cataclysm, there's been a steady decline in players on World of Warcraft. From like 12 million Wrath of the Lich King down to like 8 million today. See, that's not too, too much because that's only a 30% decrease, but that's a 30% decrease, guys. So yes, World of Warcraft is becoming less powerful, but definitely still too powerful to compete with. So that pretty much covers the present of the MMORPG, World of Warcraft. But what about the future? What's coming up? Well, we know what's coming up, but we definitely don't know how they're going to do. Upcoming MMORPGs include Elder Scrolls Online and EverQuest Next. And while these games could be incredible, my concern is that they'll try to be too much like World of Warcraft. Of course, both of these upcoming MMORPGs have elements that make them somewhat interesting. For example, Elder Scrolls Online has the Skyrim with friends idea working for it. And EverQuest Next has this Minecraftian sub-game within it which allows you to build on top of the world and perhaps even get those elements into the base MMORPG. Yet, of course, they suffer from some World of Warcraft elements thrown in there as well. Elder Scrolls Online has a first-person mode but so does WoW, and playing an MMORPG is incredibly inconvenient in first-person mode, so it's unclear how much use that's going to get. And EverQuest Next is, of course, based on EverQuest, which actually influenced some parts of World of Warcraft, and I don't know how well those elements that were originally EverQuest are going to do in this now World of Warcraft-dominated world. So, to conclude, once again I leave you with a to-be-continued. 
I don't know how Elder Scrolls Online or EverQuest are going to do, so I really can't tell you anything about that. But this is an exciting time for the MMORPG because both of these games, Elder Scrolls Online and EverQuest Next, are backed by incredibly large companies. EverQuest Next is backed by Sony, and Elder Scrolls Online, while not being developed by Bethesda, is definitely being paid for by Bethesda. So who knows how this is gonna go. So if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. I have a video before this. You might like it. If you like this video, like it please. And if you want to watch more of my videos, please subscribe. I am Maxwell Ticus Rex, and thank you for watching. I am Maxwell, hear me roar.